And welcome back to The Crochet Crowd. I'm your host, Mikey. Today we have the simple little dishcloth and this is a free pattern available on my website on thecrochetcrowd.com. There will be a link in the more information of this video in order to access. And this is the same one that you see in the photograph here. Very nice and simple. And this is a really great idea for those that like to customize their kitchen with colors that they love. And these little dishcloths really do come in handy for scrubbing those dishes that we all love to do. <laughs> Today I'm using a four and a half millimeter crochet hook just like so or a size G. You will notice that the yarn that we have, it'll be Bernat Handicrafter is what I'm using. It's a cotton. It's a lot more durable than just a regular acrylic and that's why you want to choose cotton for your kitchen uh, products just like so. When you rotate it around it's going to be showing you that you should be using a five millimeter crochet hook or a size H but I recommend a size four and a half or a size G because it makes the stitches a lot more tighter in order to work together. This is a very simple uh, project. This is really great for those that would like to learn how to crochet and start making their stitches to be right fabulous and also consistent. So now let's get started on working on this tutorial together. To get started I'm using Aquarius and that's the name of the color of the Bernat Handicrafter while I'm creating a slip knot just like so and I remember four and a half millimeter crochet hook just like this. Now you'll see in the directions that I'm asking you to chain 32. So I'm not going to show you chaining 32. This never counts as one so you just have to rotate and pull it through. So one, two, three, four and five. And so what you need to do is have a total of 32 of those and I'll meet you back up in a second and we're going to carry along. I now have 32 on my crochet hook. I do apologize for the white on the yellow background. And as per the directions it says half double crochet, third chain from the hook. So we're going to count back from the hook. So one, two, and three. Just like so. And, that, and so we're just going to wrap the yarn going into the chain and pulling the yarn through. You'll have three left on your crochet hook. You're just going to wrap the yarn and pull it through again. That's called yarning over as well. And we simply just want to half double crochet into each one of the chains. So just wrap into the next chain and pull through. Okay, so wrap. Okay, next chain. And those chains really are very clearly obvious if your chaining is not too tight. So you can just make sure that you get two strings on top, one on the bottom, and carry along and do the whole line that way. And it's just nice and very simple. So just half double crochet all the way across, meet you back up in a second where we're going to move up and do another row together. I'm now all the way back and I'm ready to turn and I'm going to turn it at this point. And this is what I need you to pay attention to. If you wanted a wider dishcloth or even a dish towel, you can just simply just chain more stitches and you can see that this is the length here. This chaining at 32 just like we started will end up with a 9 uh, inch wide uh, cloth. So that gives you an indication on how many stitches you think you may need if you want to increase it. To grow up on to, to this, <laughs> to grow up onto this to make another row, we're just simply just going to chain two. And this is where I need you to pay attention. Right in the beginning, right here, is your first stitch right underneath. And so we're just going to wrap and go in. Now normally double crochet, when we're doing double crochet, this is a half double, but normally in double crochet we skip over that and go right to the first one just like so. But in half double crochet we don't. So just simply just go into every stitch. This will get a lot faster now that you're getting more work into your hands to hold your project and you don't really have to think much about it. You're simply just half double crocheting yourself across and just make it very easy just like this. We're now coming to the very end and we just have to make sure that we're matching our stitches so that we're not growing this in a parallelogram or something crazy like that. So we actually have two stitches left. A lot of people think it's just one and that's where they end up with a triangle a afghan or a triangle dishcloth. And so this is the second last one and the very last one is this little piece right in the end. Okay, just right into the chain itself and therefore you have a nice square edge just like so. So let's turn it again and the same rules apply like we did on the other side over here. We're simply just going to chain up two. So one and two and we're going to come into the very same stitch right underneath like this. Okay and normally double crochet as I explained before we would be jumping over that but in this case we're not going to. Okay, so now we simply just half double crochet ourselves across. We want to do 14 lines of this. So the, right starting from now we want to do 14. Uh, so we have a total of 16 at the end of the project just like this. And you can see that this little loop is holding out. So if this was me off camera I would pull it apart 
and just redo that just to make it a lot easier. I just want to kind of leave that in the video to show you that if you have plies separating like that, I'd really recommend that you um, fix it right away because it's something that would catch on your dishes um, afterward and then probably pull apart your dish rag a lot quicker than you should. So when I get to the other side here, I want to show you what happens at the end here because we put two stitches just like into the one here. I want to show you how to operate that because they're actually one stitch and not just two. So I'm coming up to the very end and it appears that there's three stitches left and in actual fact there's only two. The one on the outside here, you see how it's originating from the same one at the bottom. It's just one stitch only. So we're just going to simply just come in and we're going to half double crochet and this is the, these two belong together. So we're just going to simply come into the top stitch. Sorry, we should wrap first. Come into this top stitch and therefore they become one when you do a half double crochet and see this keeps the edging nice. So if you didn't do the second stitch here you would see a big gap right in this section here before this row started and it's something that's very undesirable. So continue along. Uh, we need to have a total of 16 rows all together and just I'll get you started here and the next time I come back is that I'm not going to do the entire thing on camera here but in actual fact I am going to do and look at that. I missed a stitch <laughs> right underneath. I missed a stitch so I would have to come back just like so. Just have to come back just like so. <laughs> this is how fun this can be. So we just come back. We want to capture everything. See how enthusiastic I can get? So let me do that. So it's nice and simple. <laughs> and again these two come together and now turn. And that looks a lot better. So now we're simply just going to chain up two and again into the same stitch on the bottom and do the same things all along. So a total of 16 rows. When we come back I'm going to show you how to do a border. I'm not going to do the entire uh, uh, dishcloth on screen for with you and in fact I'm just going to show you how to do a border, how to handle the edges just like so in order to go around and to be able to finish this off pretty lickety split. So let's pretend we're actually finishing this and we come to our last stitch. Remember that the two belong together so it's just one and we simply just want to uh, fasten off this at this point. So we're now completely done. So I'm just going to quickly snip just like so. <laughs> I have the worst scissors. <laughs> yeah, totally. So we're just going to pull through just like that. Okay, nice and tight. We're just going to pull it tight and I just want to kind of just weave it through a little bit in order to kind of pull it through. Just like that. And what we're going to do is on the outside border, you can choose not to do a border. I recommend it. It looks a lot nicer and it'll, it'll make the nice uh, strong edging uh, for your cloth as well. You don't have to be too uh, uh, meticulous to get it through too many spaces. You can just leave it like this. And so what you want to do now is you want to turn this over. This is the starting tail that we had. We want to weave that through as well just a few spaces so that when we come back to do the single crochet around the edge that we can capture that so we don't have to worry about that falling out either. So just leave these hanging out. We're going to come back and trim after we do our single crochet. Now when you're doing your single crochet what we're going to do is that we're going to start along the nice edge first. So either top or bottom it doesn't matter. And then when we get to the side just like so I want you to take a quick look here because there's no stitching that you can see. So you have to just eye it out and make it look good. So you can kind of see that I came down into the stitch here and then I just kind of jumped over a little bit. So you kind of want to make this side that looks all perfect kind of the same way just by grabbing into the side just like so and we want to do that all the way around. So let's uh, begin to do that process next. I'm now going to start off with my pale yellow. This is Bernat Handicrafter and I simply just want to come into a corner just like this. So I just came right into a corner piece and so if this was a full size you would be doing the same thing. Did you see I just didn't do any knots. I just kind of pulled a loop through because we're just going to uh, crochet over that. So we're just going to chain up one and I simply I want you to put two single crochets into that same spot. This is the first part of turning the corner. So when we when you do this single crochet just get that straggler to sit on top of the crochet hook so it's trapped in a position and now just simply come along just like if it was regular stitches which it is regular stitches I suppose uh, but just come along the top edge just trapping that straggler underneath the stitches as you go and do that for about an inch or two. 
So now what I want you to do just put that straggler in behind and I want you now to just single crochet along this edge here and I'll meet you back up in a sec. We're gonna get close to the other side first and then I'm gonna show you how to turn the corner to go around this particular dishcloth. So I'm coming to the next side here and this is where the straggler is in position over here and I just wanna trap that just like it was the original straggler that was on this side just underneath the stitches so that it can permanently get lost and we can safely trim that afterward. So we're just working our way all the way to the edge like so. So we have one more to go and then on the very corner just like we're gonna do right now is that we need to turn the corner. So we're gonna put two double, two single crochets into the corner then we are gonna chain two, one and two and then two single crochets again into the same corner and you just officially turned. So now this is the side edge and this is where you need to make this over here kind of blend into that. So we simply just want to just kind of just go in between stitches. So I'm just kind of grabbing. So I'm going to go there, there. I'm going to jump in between here. Okay, I'm going to jump in between here. You kind of see gaps that you can do. And now I'm ready to turn the corner. So you would do a whole edge just like so. Corner, again, two single crochets. Two chain, just like that. Okay, and we simply just want to uh, now go along the bottom edge. Now the bottom looks different because of the way we did it, so we just want to come in between the stitches, just like so. So just slam your hook in between the two. You kind of can see it there because the yarn is variegated, and just go along in between the stitches, just like that and do that all the way along the bottom. And when you get closer to the other side you're gonna have this straggler to worry about and again we just wanna trap it underneath and carry along. So I'll meet you back up over here. Okay, we're now on the other side and we're simply just gonna just double crochet or single crochet again over top of the other weaved in section. You can see that's trapping into position and we go all the way to the corner. And then on the final corner, it's like we did before, two single crochets two chain and two single crochet again. And so now we're ready to go up this side of it and obviously this would be a lot longer. Just like we did before, just look for some space that you can see that it looks equal so don't do any massive jumping ahead because you want the single crochet to look consistent going all the way. You can see that I didn't look at the other side in order to get the counts, I don't need to. Now that I'm on this side, I'm ready for the corner. This is the final corner. We are simply just gonna chain two sorry, a single crochet twice, chain two, and then just slip stitch to the beginning chaining that you had, just like so. And voila, you are now done. So all we just need to do is just trim, trim this end. We just wanna weave in our ends and probably use a darning needle to really secure that underneath the stitches. I'm just gonna take the yarn, pull it through that loop. So this is the straggler yarn that I just cut, pull it through, tighten it, and then I just wanna weave it through some sections in order to really hide that into position. And again, I would really strongly recommend a darning needle because you are gonna be using this to scrub ne uh, dishes. So all we just need to do now is that we just need to look back at the work and just start trimming anything that is popping out because of the way that you secured this into position, that you can safely cut all of those and you don't have to worry about your work falling apart by doing it the proper way. And we want to make sure that we get all of our stragglers. This is kind of where we started. And again, I would just want to weave this in a little bit better, but when you're done, you can just simply just trim it. And now you are good to go with your new, brand new dishcloth. And in fact, this would be a nice little scrubby just for something very simple to be able to do with your dishes. Till next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of the crochetcrowd.com.